Okay, if you're one of those who are like me, who look for the cheapest possible items on eBay, for example, and then offers them even a lower price to get an even better deal, and then have to deal with the consequences, this video is for you. I bought this set of uh, bearings. They're supposed to be a support bearings for the ball screw. And what I found out quickly, the original bearings are not even a deep groove bearings. They're just regular average bearings that you can buy in, I don't know, in a hardware store. And these blocks are absolute junk. But then what would you expect for paying cheapest possible price? But check it out. This machine got less than a couple hours on it. And you, I don't know if you can see the play of ball screw. But it is there. And this play, axial play in a ball, bear, uh, ball screw, you can't adjust it with that nut because it's tied up against one another and there is no more adjustment room. So we're gonna fix that. I bought a set of angular contact bearings, eight of them, that's how many I need to replace all of them on my machine, cost as much or even more than a, perhaps one set of ball screw with both the supporting blocks. So that's something to consider also. Uh, the number on them it differs by one digit original ones are 6001 and the new ones are 7001 so I'm gonna try and upgrade my CNC machine stay tuned so by looking at this setup it seems that the system is built in such a way that by squeezing the nut that's on the ball screw, we squeeze these inner race, races together uh, with these colors. And so I have to put these bearings in such a way where axial load is maximum in this direction facing each other, two bearings facing each other. But we see now, if I squeeze these two inner races together, I still have a play in the outer races. And this is not something that we want. So what I'm going to have to do is make a shim to put between the outer races so that they spaced out, together, uh, out from each other. And by squeezing inner races, we can achieve a good angular contact and so it looks like 15 thousand thick shim should work for us I marked approximately the center of the shim. I'm gonna align it in the punch die. Center it. And then we're gonna whack it real good.
there's our shim. I think it turned out all right. And it clears the inner rays on all sides pretty much evenly. So I cleaned the bearings real good and I'm going to apply some lithium grease on them. It's a universal type of grease that should work in these low RPMs that I'm getting, maximum 3000. And we're gonna put it together. To make sure I put it in the right way. So we we got some gap in this flange, which is okay because we got the shim and everything going on inside. This has to be pretty tight to hold all those uh, both of them bearings together. Now, we will have zero play. So this gap turned out to be about, precisely about uh, 15 thousandths thick as our shim. So, just information. Anyway, if you like this video, con uh, consider subscribing, liking, Whatever, you know what to do. Cheers!